Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take smart notes on podcasts. Podcasts are usually packed with all sorts of knowledge and insight, but they're difficult to take notes on because of the fact that we're usually not in front of our computers when we're listening to podcasts. We're either at the gym, in our cars, or going for a walk. And in this video, I'm going to show you three different methods for how you can remember and use the knowledge that you gain from listening to podcasts. Now, let's get to the tutorial. As I mentioned in the introduction to this video, one of the things that makes it so challenging to take smart notes on podcasts is the fact that we're not usually in front of our computers when we're listening to podcasts. We're on the go, we're maybe in our cars, at the gym. And so we end up missing out on a lot of valuable knowledge that is inside of podcasts. I want to give you some ideas for how you could do this and share three different methods that you can use for taking smart notes on podcasts. But before we get into those methods, we need to review the core principles for taking smart notes. Fleeting notes are really nothing more than reminders of the main points, ideas, or stories that a guest mentions in a episode of a podcast. And I like to write these down in a notebook because they're really throwaway notes more than anything. They're just there to remind you. So you just want to have maybe a couple of words to remind you of the core concept. Now, you can actually skip this step and just automatically capture the thought inside of Mem. But the core step of taking smart notes is what are called literature notes. And literature notes are where you rewrite an idea in your own words, and then you link back to the original source. And this is where you want to ask questions that encourage elaboration and maybe come up with some of your own ideas. And what you'll see here on the right-hand sidebar is a, an example of a literature note with the format where I'm basically writing about a concept called conflict language from a book called The Science of Stuck. And you can see here that this is my version of a description of the concept of conflict language, but this is the version that the author wrote. And so what this forces you to do is reconstruct this idea from memory so it reinforces the idea and you're much more likely to remember whatever it is that you heard. So now let's go into the three different methods for how you could take smart notes on a podcast. Now, typically the first method is to do this by memory. And basically what you're going to do with this method is you will listen to a podcast and then whenever you're sitting down in front of your computer, you'll just write down the core ideas, maybe write five, six, seven notes on the things that you learned from the podcast. And the upside of this method is that it basically forces you to use what's called retrieval practice, which reinforces the ideas because you have to reconstruct them from memory. The downside of this method is that as time passes, it becomes harder and harder to remember what it was because we listen to so much content every day or we consume so much content every day. But here's an example of this. So recently we had Robert Waldinger, who has one of the most popular TED Talks of all time about a longitudinal study on happiness that has been going on for 80 years. And one of the things that he said in that interview was that relationships deregulate stress. And you can see here that I created a note. And in this case, because I have access to the podcast transcript, because it's my transcript, I just put a link back to the original source. But if you're doing this and you don't have access to the transcript, what you could do is you could just link to the actual podcast episode. And then you would just rewrite this idea in your own words. And again, the downside of this is that, let's say a couple weeks go by or a couple days go by, you might not remember what it was. The other method that you can use is to create bi-directional links within a podcast transcript. So let me open up the podcast transcript for Robert Waldinger. What you'll do in this case is you would progressively summarize this where we would just go through and bold the things that really stood out to us. As you can see here, I have a couple of things here that I've bolded. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to find the things that stand out of the things that you've bolded, and then you're going to create bi-directional links within them. And what I like about this method is that it makes a transcript a much more useful document because often transcripts are filled with so much content that isn't necessarily relevant. And Tiago Forte actually says that the value of content isn't evenly distributed. And the truth is that a podcast transcript is a transcript of a conversation. So there's going to be a natural ebb and flow that may not necessarily just have information and facts in it that you want to be able to use, but it makes your transcripts a lot richer. And so the nice thing about this is, again, you can have a transcript full of bi-directional links. You can easily link back to the source. The downside of this, of course, is that you might not have access to the transcript or that transcripts are just filled with so much information, it's hard to parse the signal from the noise to just find the most important parts. But that's, of course, where progressive summarization comes in. So again, what we might want to do is basically 
add bidirectional links for anything that we think is important. So for example, this is a concept called the teaching of socio-emotional learning. And I know for a fact that I want to remember this because I'm working on an article about how we could redesign the education system to support better outcomes for students in the future and have an education system that uh, prepares them better. So I could just say, okay, you know what, this is an important idea. What I want to do is I want to push this into a new mem. And whenever I have time, I will go ahead and fill it in. Now, one thing that often happens is people end up with a lot of empty mems when they create bidirectional links. So one thing that I do to avoid that is I just add it into my inbox. So that way I won't forget about it. Now, the other method that you can use to take smart notes on podcast is to use a podcast player that lets you capture highlights while you're listening. So there's a audio player called Snip that I like to use. And why I like it is because anytime I hear something that I'm listening to on Snipped, I can just press create a snip and it saves it, it gives me the transcript, and it makes it easier to capture my notes while I'm in the car or out on a run, whatever it is. And you can triple tap on your headphones if you have them. The downside of this is that it isn't always perfect. So the transcript doesn't come in perfectly clean. The audio clip doesn't come in perfectly clean. So you actually have to go and you have to adjust the markers inside of that. And it's not a big deal. It just takes a little bit of work. But the other thing that's really cool about Snipped is when you actually create a Snipped, in addition to whatever it is that you created a Snip of, it actually gives you two key takeaways for Snipped. And if you go to snipd.com, you can learn more about Snipped. This is by far my favorite podcast player. I think it has a number of features that really make it substantially better than almost any other podcast player out there. So just to recap, there are three basic methods for taking smart notes on podcasts. The first is to just listen and to write down your notes by memory and see what you retain. The second is to create a transcript, progressively summarize it and add bi-directional links. And the third is to use a podcast snipped to capture highlights while you're listening. The other thing that's nice about snipped is that it integrates with Readwise and then you can automatically import those notes from Readwise into Mem. And if you haven't seen it, I've actually done a video on how to do this where you set up a zap so that you can move your notes from Readwise into Mem. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.